when the bottom falls out. Even today, my complaint is bitter, Joe said. Uh, on the suggested preaching calendar, most pastors today are preaching about a manger in Bethlehem. And I guess I'm supposed to be talking about the three wise men who come from the east. The really Bible doesn't say three. The Bible actually says the wise men bearing three gifts. It could have been 50. We'll get to that next week. But the wise men come from the east bearing gifts so I could be talking about the way in the manger. No crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus lays down his sweet head. Or oh, my favorite Christmas song. Everybody got a favorite one. I hope it's not chestnuts. It's joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. Let heaven and nature sing. I'll get to that next Sunday and the message of what happened to Christmas because I think something has happened uh, different. But for the past three Tuesdays, those who have been around, we've been giving out index cards and asking people, let the people ask questions from their heart or from the word of God. Uh, about their walk with the Lord Brown, and I hope that I answered most of them correctly, but there was one card I put aside for the day. Say, Bishop, I heard all that stuff about what's to come is better than what's been, but what do you do when the bottom falls out? And, and maybe y'all can't relate, but ha has anybody ever had a bad day on what's supposed to be a good day? in the season of celebration. I'm only going to be a few minutes. What do you do when nothing seems to be working? It's like when you hit a pothole and know you don't have money for a muffler nor a wheel of iron. What do you do when the bottom falls out? I, I don't think that I'm preaching uh, just from my own experience, but there's some people here who have been burnt out, hurt, tired, disappointed. Uh, one of them, tell somebody I've been there. <laughs> called the low place and a couple of years ago I entered uh, what I thought was the darkest period of my life and people had warned me uh, that I would burn out and I thought I could prove them wrong. So some of y'all might remember when Wade came and said, you need, you need to take a 30 day sabbatical. And everybody was telling me to slow down. There's too much on your plate. And, and usually I, I tried to, uh, but I would get tired and get out of balance when I saw the edge because I thought I could pull myself back. Can I talk to some real folk that found the edge and found yourself falling and didn't know how you was going to get up? Y'all have been laughing at the commercial, but at some point we're all like Wayne in the kitchen saying, I need somebody to get me off the floor. I, I know you don't have no problem on this side, let me preach on that side, but there are some days when you say, if I could just get somebody to help me get back up. person who, who suffers from depression, I think that in that particular season, had I gone to a doctor and received the diagnosis, they would have said I was having clinical depression. Or as one doctor said, that you had a, uh, a silent breakdown. And I'm preaching this today because there's some of y'all on the edge. Uh, it, it's not your stereotypical depression. I, I could get out of bed every day, and I did. I prayed and read my Bible. I even danced and ran. And, and But there are days when church is over, you feel like hope has died. <laughs> Can I preach this to real people? The motivation and passion drops to zero. I had never seen that before. I had seen many people, Pat in ministry, that had gone down this road before. But what scared me is that some of my friends never got back. For them, ministry was gone, and to many of us, we got friends where breakdown has killed their whole life. And here's the thing, tragically, that was done, hopefully never fully returning, and they never did uh, become the person they were before. And so that was the last thing I think happened to me. I'm Mr. Trotter, I'm, the, I'm Mr. What's to Come, it's better than what's been, and it's only a test, and silent tears, and you know, I, I'm not supposed to corrode on the inside. But can I be honest and tell you that I'm not the only one that uh, sometimes we smiled on the outside and have serious corrosion, corrosion, serious corrosion.
corrosion on the inside. And, and, and I, I didn't want to be the likely candidate that, that said that I, I, I had derailed. Yeah. I had quit. I spiraled down for about three months before I hit bottom. And then with the love and assistance of this great church and the very gracious God, I began to recover. So I, I looked honestly at the steps that, that, that I went through before I went down. But let me just tell you this, and I, I hope it does help somebody. Every now and then, the Lord would drop me a word in my low place. And one of those that I hung my heart on was Isaiah 54 and 6, where it said, No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Just numb, just numb. You no longer feel the highs and 
the goals of life. This accident is one of the earliest signs for me near danger. I don't like the dentist either. I guess I don't like a lot of things. Roller coaster dentists or whatever. But I do like the fact that they numb me and I can't feel nothing when they're digging in my mouth because I'm, I'm, you know, so much don't like pain. But, but when your main emotion is numbness, you do stuff to people and have no feelings about it. You invite them in your mess and have no feeling about it, no conviction. Y'all ain't liking this. Sign number three, people drain you. When, when you really have it bad, uh, people really can drain you. And, and let me just say this, because I got the mic. Uh, sometimes you can't say something to people every time, because you don't know what they're dealing with. Sleep or we go don't help most of us 
people can bounce back with fresh energy. Because hey, you can have a month off and come back with a, no real difference. Yeah. I took three weeks of medical, went to Australia, and all the way home, I, I, I felt worse. I said, maybe I should have stayed out there with the white folks on the, on the bus and stuff. And search for the aborigines and, and we'll go to the wine country. I'm, I'm on my way home. I'm supposed to be happy. You didn't have vacation and you come back miserable. Now, now what, what happens, beloved, is that we, Ill, we, we deal with this in, in different ways. Some people oversleep, some don't sleep at all. Some people tired every day. I'm almost finished. I got a baby to bless and some things to do. And so, so then when you get to the bottom, the worst thing you can do is have the wrong people in your space. I could find God. I could go where he lived. 
and me and God would have a conversation and I, I filled my mouth with arguments, verse 5, and I would learn how he would answer me and what he would think. Uh, and, and he would strongly suggest to me and really listen to me. I go to the east and I can't find him. I go to the north, I can't find him. I go to the south, I can't see him, but he knows the way that, that I take. I, I got to preach to you in greater hearts. I'm going to say this. Who moved? So this man and his wife, they drive in the road together. And she said, honey, we used to drive this road and we'd be all hooked up. All rubby dubby. Bumping and grinding. Feeling good. And he keeps on driving. She said, honey, we used to drive this road and they couldn't separate us. After a while, the husband looks at her and says, Well, who moved? I've been in the same place on this road every time we drove it. You'll get this one here. The Lord stopped by sweet Holy Spirit to tell somebody he's in the same place he was the last time you had an issue. But maybe you moved. Yeah. <laughs> 
understand it now. But you will understand. Right. Father, let your word be effective unto these our people. Grant us deliverance from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Strengthen. Heal, deliver, set free is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen.